Let us pray. Let us be still for a moment as we draw near to worship God. Take just a few seconds to remind yourself why we are gathered here today. Listen, God speaks even though the background noise of the world around us. Lord God, in this short time together, open our ears and our eyes to see your vision for this place and our part within it. Teach us, hear our prayers, and enable us for service wherever you might take us. To your praise and glory. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, and I welcome you to St. Mary's this third Sunday after the Feast of Pentecost. Our service begins in your bulletin or on page 355 if you're using the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it, in order that it may produce bows and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it every kind of bird shall live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field will know that I am Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The psalm for today is Psalm 92, verses 1 through 4 and 11 through 14, found in your Book of Common Prayer on page 720 or in the insert in your bulletin. Let us read this responsibly, breaking at the asterisk. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. And to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To tell of your loving kindness in the morning. And of your faithfulness in the night season. On the psaltery and the lyre. And to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord. And I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in an old age. They shall be green and succulent. That they may show how upright the Lord is. My God in whom there is no fault. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We are always confident even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good, or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, he does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also had said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nest in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them, and as they were able to hear it, he did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. 
I speak to you this morning in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. A lot of times these particular parables kind of uh, fall in our ears weird because we might know, not know as much about farming and seeds as probably people in Jesus' time did, but um, I always loved these parables because I grew up in an agricultural community, much like Dade City. And uh, our life revolved all around farming and it all revolved all around uh, the schedule of the harvest, planting and cultivating and then harvesting, and that's where our community got its it's uh, money from. It's where our community thrived was in agriculture. So um, I always love these kind of parables that talk about that, that talk about planting and agriculture because they're, so, um, they're so apropos even today for us, some of the messages that, that Jesus sent. I'm sure that fishermen hearing this message would probably have a blank expression on their face because they would have no idea what Jesus was talking about. Uh, but we kind of do because we live in agriculture and understand um, seeding and planting. And so... Jesus is trying to use parables, stories, to explain to the disciples what the coming kingdom of God is going to be like. And so he uses two parables, and the first is the one that he uses here of the farmer that just throws seed out unaware and then kind of goes along his way. And then the second one he uses is the parable about the mustard seed, being the tiniest of seed but making a great tree. Now these were paired together for a reason because they both talk more than anything about God and about God's work with us. And so Jesus is really telling the disciples, look, the kingdom of God is going to be fulfilled in me. The scriptures say it. I'm here to fulfill those scriptures. And so he's really announcing them that actually the kingdom of God is here right now with me. The kingdom of God is here. You don't have to wait for it. But the kingdom of God does have to grow. It has to get larger than just his 12 disciples. That's why he uses this parable of the seed, because it is something that they would have understood as an agrarian society. And as we hear it, even though it's a short parable, it is just full to us of truth about God and God's power and God's growth with us. It is all about God. Notice that the farmer puts the seed and then it does what? He goes in and goes to bed, right? We don't hear about him hoeing or cultivating or, or watering it. He plants the seed and then goes to sleep. And then one day he comes out, whoop, full stock of wheat, right? That he can go harvest. Now, we know there's a lot that goes in between that. But there's a lot of truth that comes out of this parable about the seed. And that is the first part of it is that our total dependence on God. God is the one who gives growth. God is the one who gives life. We can't create anything. God is the creator. Anything that's created is created through us by him. Whether it's a beautiful painting, whether it's woodwork that we do, no matter what it is, God gives us the skills and the knowledge to do that. Even though our hands are doing it, it is a gift from God that that is created. And so we have a total dependence on God for all that we have and for all the growth that comes to us as well. Because without God, we can't do anything. God is the whole spark of life. He's the one that sets the growth in place. And then we find once we realize that God does that growth that we don't really notice that growth all that much. It's almost imperceptible to us sometimes. You know, particularly when you have a little child, you don't really notice day-to-day -day that child growing day-to-day. -day. Now, if you have a grandparent or something that comes in and seen the child in the year, what do they say? Oh, my gosh, he's grown two feet since I saw him last. They notice the change because it's been a long time. The same with us. If we have a garden, we might plant something, but we don't really notice it day-to-day. -day. You know, we don't take a ruler out and measure the millimeters that it's growing. We notice that it is growing, but we don't know how much. It's almost imperceptible to us, the growth. But the point is, even though we don't see it day by day, that growth is still there. That growth still happens. God's power is still working to grow things, even though we don't notice it. 
And so what that tells us about God's power and God's growth is that it's constant. It's constantly there and moving. There's no time that it stops. You know, we as humans get a little antsy sometimes and, you know, sometimes we're real irregular with what we do. Sometimes our lives are one step forward and two steps back and we never really stay on a solid course all the time. We get impatient. But God has all eternity to work with. God is in no hurry whatsoever. So God does what God does when God does it. And that's hard for us to accept sometimes. Our time and God's time aren't always the same. But regardless of that, God is still growing us. Even in our impatience. Even when we're waiting for something for God, He's still working behind the scenes. That's constant. Constant interaction. And that growth is in all things. And as much as we might try to stop that growth, we really can't. Think about an oak tree breaking up a sidewalk in front of it with its limbs because it grows so large. Or you see a patch of asphalt and there are green shoots coming out of it that have forced its way through. God's life lives on. God's power lives on. We might try to curtail it with our human methods, but in the end of eternity, God is there, and God is working, and God's power is on full display. So God's power is there from start to finish, constantly, constantly moving with us and transforming us in all life around it. We just might not see it. But we do need to pay attention because the most important thing Jesus tells in this gospel is that there will be a day of harvest. There will be a day when the growing's over with and it's going to be time to harvest the fruit. And we've talked a lot the last couple of weeks about the good fruits of the Spirit, the fruits that Paul tells us to have in our lifetime. And at that day of harvest, what it really is is a day of judgment, and Jesus talks about this a lot. There will be a day that the, the wheat is separated from the chaff and the good vines are separated from the bad vines and the fruit of the Spirit is separated from the fruit that's not so spiritual. And so we need to be aware that there is that day coming. We need to be aware that there's something out there that we need to be prepared for and look for. Because that harvest day is going to come for us and we don't want to be caught unawares. And so knowing that there's a harvest, there are three things as Christians that we really need to work on. First is our patience. We need to be more patient. Because God does work in God's own time. We get very impatient as humans. We get impatient at some traffic. We get impatient at the line at Publix. No matter where it is, we always got something to do, someplace else to be, somewhere to go. God has his plan, though, and nobody's rushing his plan. So we need to be patient and let God do his thing with us. Let God do his growth and work in us and not resist it. We need to give God time to do his thing. We need to be able to sit quietly with God. That's a rare gift that many of us do not possess, the time to sit quietly with God. But then we also have to have hope. Hope is what the Christian faith is all about. If we didn't have the hope of eternal life, of everlasting life in Christ Jesus, why would we be here? What would we be doing? You know, this right now is a, a society that really is in despair in a lot of ways. We're in despair over our schools. We're in despair over our politics. We're in despair over our church in some places, the way the church is acting. Everywhere we turn around, we see things that drain us and make us despair. So how do we get up in the morning? Hope. Hope in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
and His promise to us that those who follow Him will come with Him. Hope is what gets us through the day sometimes when our impatience gets the best of us and things don't happen the way we want them to happen. So we have to have hope. And then finally, we have to be ready. We have to be prepared. We talk about this all the time at Lent. And we talk about it at Advent. But really, it's a year-long thing. Jesus tells us many times, we know not the time or the hour that the harvest is going to come. Now, I don't know any farmer worth his salt that would wait until he walks out and says, ooh, everything's ready to harvest before he starts getting ready for the harvest. Farmers know their crops. They're going to get labor to pick the crops. They're going to get machinery to move the crops. They're going to plan for when the harvest comes. That's the only way to get a good yield. That's the only way to make the most of what's been planted. Don't we want God to get the most out of us when our harvest time comes? Don't we want our spiritual fruit to be so overabundant that we're a major part of the harvest? We should as Christians. That's our job. That's the one thing that Jesus has told us to do. Because all of those fruits of the spirits come down to love one another as I have loved you. Show grace. Show love. Show compassion and mercy. Show kindness. Those are the fruits that prepare us for the harvest. Those are the fruits that help open us to God's growth and transformation. And all we have to do from this gospel that we read today is plant the seeds. That's all we as Jesus farmers are responsible for is planting the seeds. We're not asked to water it or hoe it or weed it or cultivate it. We're just called to plant the seeds. And that's what Jesus is speaking to in the second parable about the mustard seed. He said even the tiniest seed can make a huge tree, a huge shrub that becomes a nest for birds and feeds the other animals. And what he's saying is even the greatest things in the world have small beginnings. Everything has to start somewhere, no matter how small that start is. Everything comes from a small beginning that's built on slowly by slowly. And that's what God does with us. When we plant those seeds with other people, God begins to work on them. God begins to move and transform them. And that seed starts to grow inside them until they really pull that pull to come and be in the presence of God and the presence of Jesus Christ in the presence of the Holy Spirit that we have here. That's what happens to us. I want to give you an example by a little experiment that we used to do in chemistry class. And we'd take a long tube of water that was just plain water and would have a little vial of dye, of dye and would take and put three or four drops of dye in the water and would wait a minute and then nothing. Water still looked like water. They would put four or five more, and then four or five more, and slowly the tint of the water would begin to change. And then we added more and more little drops, and each little drop that was added made the water turn more and more like the color of the dye, until finally the whole column of water was the rich color of the dye. Thousands of little tiny drops. And each one was important. Each one was significant. There's nothing that we can't do in the name of Jesus Christ that isn't significant when we're spreading his word. We might think the little kindnesses, the little actions that we take are unimportant. But they're just like drops of dye in that vial. They add up. They add up to build and enrich the kingdom of God. And that's all we have to do is those little steps, those little drops, and have the faith that God will do the rest. That's the message that Jesus is trying to get through to his disciples. 
this gospel today hits particularly close to home with me because, as I said, I was born in an agricultural family. My father was a third generation farmer from North Dakota. Woo. North Dakota fans out there. We got some of those in the audience. And um, farming was his life. Everything he did was about farming. Now, anyone who's ever farmed in Florida knows that we have our fair share of calamities that can really ruin a season, right? Whether it's vegetables or orange trees or whatever, nature isn't always kind to us when we farm. But people would ask him year after year, how do you keep doing that? How do you keep putting seed in the ground? We have hurricanes or we have droughts or we have white fly or we have, you name it. How do you keep doing that year after year? And he said very simply, faith in God. I leave it up to God. And that never hit me so closely than one day he was over at our house visiting our little one when he was a little one. And he was looking at a needle point that was on the wall, a needle point that Sharon had made many years before, and he was just kind of staring at it. And I came and stood up next to him and looked at what he was looking at, and I got what really entranced him. It was a very simple needle point of a sunflower. And it said, he who plants a seed beneath the sod and waits to see believes in God. Faith. Faith that God will do the work that he promises to do if we'll but plant those seeds. Oh, that we might have the faith of a farmer to do the hard work that God calls us to do and then hand it over to him in faith. Please stand as we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found in your bulletin or on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people this morning are guided by Form 1 and are found inside your bulletin. Let us kneel before our Lord as we raise our voices to Him in prayer. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our Bishop Dabney, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
for our president, our governor, and for the leaders of all the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for Dade City, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth of which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all of those with urgent and ongoing need in our parish prayer list, especially. Those who are preparing for or recovering from surgeries, most especially Lori Hildebrandt, Lee Bren, Peggy Fetch, Elaine Morgan, Freda Barlow, Charles Edwards, Karen Phillips, and Betty Milton. We pray for those with urgent need this day, Cecil McGavern, Greg Goody, Dara Morgan, Tammy Bentley, Pat Goltry, Joyce Delosier, Barbara Jones, Kelly Oakley, Rondell Rutland, Jeannie White, Julianne Leslie, Grant and Kristen, Ashley Brash, Brent Price, Betty Carey, Jesse McGeehy, Andrea Ching, and Reverend Richard Brent. We also pray for those with ongoing need, John, Kelly, David, Emmett, Alyssa, Mary, Lisa, Susan, Jen, David, and their family, Allison and family, Perry, Stephen, Bibi, Mark, Cecil, Melvin, Mason, and Sue Ann. We pray for Jerry and Diane Rice, for Dave and Marge Moffat, Terry and Denise McKenzie, Leon and Betty Milton, Jim and Janice Tabb, and Karen and Dennis Phillips. Are there others? Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord that we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. In the communion of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
my brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace to the transept. Peace to the band. Please be seated. So a couple of announcements for us today, and then our blessings, um, and then another little talk for you today, um, a short one. But uh, as far as announcements go, we are still looking for painters, for anyone who has uh, the time and the energy to help us with that. We're finishing up a little bit of work in the sacristy, and then we also have some painting that has to be done in Reed Hall. Uh, once we get that to the point of being able to paint. So if you have some spare time to give and some energy to give, if you could contact Linda or Leroy Hoff, they'll put you on the list. And next time we get a painting day together, uh, we'll give you a call and you can come help us out with that. So we would appreciate it. Um, our other services during the week, we continue with our women's uh, Eucharist and breakfast at 6.30 on Wednesdays and our men's Eucharist and breakfast at 6.30 on Thursday. We also have our Bible study on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock, followed by Eucharist at 11. Thursday, I'm sorry. Thursday at 10 o'clock. So that's why I have a calendar. Yeah. Uh, Thursday at 10 o'clock, so we invite you to join us for that. And then we have Eucharist afterwards. Um, I hope you've all been enjoying the coffee hours over the last couple of weeks. And it's been good, first of all, to see so many people, uh, but also to be able to blend the two services together and uh, have us meet up and spend some time with the early service folks as uh, they're heading out and we're heading in. So um, I appreciate everyone who's uh, signed up to help with that so far. But we do have some weeks coming up that are not signed up for. So uh, if you could help, uh, and you really don't have to buy a whole lot because we have some extra stuff, but we just need someone to set it out and serve it and then kind of clean up when it's done. So if you can sign up to do that or you have an organization that can do that, um, there is a sign-up sheet in the parish hall right next to the calendar. So maybe after the service, if you can walk over there and put your name in, we'd appreciate it. And then we can make sure that the coffee hours continue. Um, seems like I had one more thing I was going to tell you. But probably not. Okay. So um, let's do birthdays, and then we'll do our next big thing. Birthdays this week, we have Nicholas Goody, Freda Barlow, Roland Sikanese, Sarah Lynn Goody and Natalie Clark. So, can you come up there? You want me to come to you for your birthday? Roland, you gonna join me? I know that's fine. Slow and steady, patience, just like I preach. Patience. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all the days of our life that you give us and for your presence and love with us all of those days. We thank you especially for our birthdays, those times that we can look backwards on our life and really reflect on our relationship with you and our relationship with each other. Gracious God, I ask you to bless all of those who celebrate birthdays this week, most especially these your servants, Freda and Roland, and we ask you to be with them on their special day. Let it be a day full of love and laughter and your abundant grace. And gracious God, we ask you to continue to be with them and guide, guard them, guide and guard them all of their days. And we ask this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Happy birthday. We also have celebrating anniversaries this week. Tom and Debbie Parks, Mitch and Kathy Boyle, and Jim and Janice Tab. Y'all come on down. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you give us spouses, partners, those that we share our life with, those that we can lean into in our time of need and lean into us and theirs so that neither of us should fall. Gracious God, I ask you to bless all of those who are celebrating anniversaries this week, 
most especially these your servants, Tom and Debbie. We ask you to be with them all of their days that they have with you. Continue to let them reflect on their marriage and that you are the center and the light of their marriage and to continue to welcome you into their, their union. And gracious God, we just ask you to walk with them day by day, fill them with your grace. Let their day together be a joyous one as they celebrate their anniversary. And this we ask in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Happy anniversary Thank to you both. You. And now I'm going to ask uh, Mr. John Finnerty to come forward, please. John is a member of the Endowment Committee and also the Building Committee Liaison to the Endowment Committee. And he's going to talk to you a bit about our Fund for the Future. Good morning. How are y'all? Uh, I was asked to tell you a few things that the Building Committee has been doing. Uh, and we're also looking for help uh, anytime we can get it. But before I tell you anything, I'd like to thank Leroy and Linda Hoff, who've been in charge of this committee and doing a lot of work. Without them, it wouldn't be as nearly as much done. Uh, but I'll kind of go building to building. Uh, one of the major things we've done here in the in the church is a new sound system, as you might know. We've also done a lot of little things. We've worked on the air conditioning here uh, quite a bit. We're putting plexiglass coverings on all the stained glass windows, replacing the old stuff that was getting cloudy uh, that protects the windows. Uh, in the sacristy next door, if you hadn't been in there, we're putting all new flooring in there, uh, painting that inside, putting new toilets in uh, the restrooms. Uh, in Freeman Hall, of course, we've done a lot of work in there, painting and just all kind of work. Uh, we're going to put new windows in there. Uh, then down in the, in the uh, nursery, we're putting new air conditioners in. We've cleaned that out. And by the way, we've hauled out about 20 dumpsters 40 yard dumpsters of old things and trash and, and that kind of thing. Uh, over in Reed Hall, which is the old offices, we've started removing a couple of walls over there uh, so that the choir will have a larger area to work in. Uh, that building is, is in need of a lot of work and we're kind of going back and forth whether we replace it or fix it. So that's that's a debate uh, that we'll have to have. Uh, Tano Hall, we've done some work out there uh, and uh, continue to do things there. Uh, in the little building out back, the, the storage shed, we've put a new roof on that. We've uh, painted that entire building. Uh, we've put gutters right here on the edge of the church. We've put some on uh, by the kitchen, uh, and just a ton of things. Linda has developed a spreadsheet of things we need to do, and it's about three pages long. And <laughs> she is keeping us busy, I can tell you that. Uh, only three pages long. Yeah, only three pages long. Uh, and it's single uh, spacing on there, too, so it's a lot of work. Uh, but. Uh, you know, we're getting together and, and as members of the church and, uh, you know, just getting it done. Uh, we're saving a lot of money by using our own labor. Uh, but one of the things we're going to have to do or one of the things we've already done is use some money out of the endowment fund uh, to do repairs. One of the other things I forgot is we've done a lot of landscape work. Uh, we've trimmed trees. Uh, I've been accused of being a crepe myrtle murderer, uh, <laughs> and I'm guilty, I have to tell you, uh, but we have done a lot of landscape work and uh, uh, just in an effort to make the, the campus look, look better. Uh, but one of the things we're going to be doing is we will have uh, a fundraising uh, 
period over a number of years that will replace the money that we've been using to improve the campus. And that's what we've been doing. And I see Tony over here nodding, so I need to acknowledge Tony too. He's been doing an awful lot of work, probably more than any of us. So thank you, Tony. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna be, uh, you know, asking you to give of your time and treasures and uh, to, for the betterment of the church. And uh, for a number of years, we didn't have the leadership or, uh, and that's not a ding on anybody, I'm sorry, but, or the, the presence uh, and motivation to get it done. And so, uh, you know, we're having to play catch up on an awful lot of this stuff. And uh, so with your help and in giving and in your sweat, you know, we'll get it done and uh, get Linda off our backs because of her list. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, we keep scratching things off here slowly, but uh, we'll get it done. But uh, I just want to thank all of you for your help and, uh, and your future support in this too. Thank you. Thank you, John. And just to reiterate one point, all of the work that we've done as a building committee has been a form of invitation. It's to make St. Mary's more inviting uh, to those that we're inviting to come in and be part of our faith community. And um, of course, we haven't had a chance to do that until just recently because of COVID and because of restrictions. But the one thing we all decided as a building committee was with the downtime that we had because of COVID, that would be a perfect time uh, without people in the buildings to actually do some of this work and get caught up. So um, if you haven't had a chance to see some of the work we've done, I really invite you uh, to go into Freeman Hall and to come by the new offices and uh, see some of the stuff that's been done. Um, and that's just surface things. Some of the things that we've done behind the scenes as well that you don't see um, have been very much needed too. So um, I appreciate all the support that we've gotten so far, both in time, talent, and treasure from everybody in this church who's, who's lent a hand whenever they could, but we still have some work to do and we want to make sure that, um, that we can accomplish it and make this place uh, the jewel of Dade City that it needs to be. So um, we appreciate you doing that. Um, two other little orders of business. Mr. Edwards, front and center. Our good friend Charles is going in for a procedure tomorrow. And uh, we're going to pray with him right now for that, that it's a good procedure and for God's protection on him because he is our friend and uh, just a wonderful fount of wisdom if you ever get a chance to sit and talk to Charles about theology. It teaches me a thing or two sometimes. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, we lift up to you this, your servant Charles, and we ask you to be with him at this time of trial. Gracious God, he's preparing for a procedure tomorrow. We ask you to be with him, even right now. Be with him, comforting him. Take away any fear and anxiety that he might have. Let the healing power of your Holy Spirit already be within him to do the work that you need to do in him to, to keep him the lively partner that he is for St. Mary's. And gracious God, we ask you to be with all of the doctors and nurses and staff that attend to him. Let them use wisdom and grace and compassion and mercy as they deal with him. But most especially, God, we just ask you to protect him through this procedure. Bring him out safely. Let all go well as it needs to. And we just ask this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and lift him up to you in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you. It's Peace, brother. to have the, the prayer support of the church family. Appreciate it. Indeed. Prayer works. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and then Sharon. And who else do we have that's going? Okay. Take care of patience. Patience. A different kind of patience. Patience that you need patience with. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm.
Huh? Oh, I got mine on. No, I'm just blessing. Okay. Uh, these are some of our choir members that are going to the uh, summer choir camp, and they're going to be traveling and being away from us, and all for the benefit of our music program and the beautiful music that we hear. So we would like to bless them and give them traveling mercies as they head to music camp. Boy, that was a long time ago that I went to music camp. <laughs> Different kind of camp. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for these, your servants, who give so much of their time and talent to bring beautiful music to this place and to enrich our services. And gracious God, they love going and participating in these camps to learn new things and to try new things and to lift up their voice to you in worship and song. Gracious God, I ask you to be with them as they travel to and from camp to make their obstacles be few and their pathways straight. And we just ask you to guide, guard, and protect them in all that they do and that you might bring them back safely to us when they are done and that they might share their new gifts that they receive at camp with us in the very near future. And we lift all of them up to you in the name of our son, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Bless you all. We're not done yet. Hold on. Jared. Speak on a traveling mercies. You're going out of town this week, right? Yeah. Okay. My new wingman on the altar for the late service, Jared. We're glad to have him with us as an acolyte. And he's doing a fabulous job, if you guys have noticed. And so we're so glad to have him here. So I want to keep him protected. And uh, he's a boy, and I've been there, so I know what kind of trouble you can get into on vacation. So um, let's pray for Jared and for safety for him as well. Gracious God, I thank you for this, your servant Jared, and for all of that he does for us here at St. Mary's and his service to you at the altar. Gracious God, he's going away for a, a, a little trip, a little fun, and we ask you to be with him on that. Gracious God, protect him on the road. Give he and his family traveling mercies. Protect them in all ways, coming backwards and forwards, and just be with him and protect him as well in all that he might do. Make it be a fun time for him, an enjoyable time, and a memorable time. But bring him back safely to us so he can continue to serve you in the way that he has. And we just ask your traveling mercies and protections on him. In the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you. Is there anybody else traveling that needed traveling mercies while I'm up here? I'm warmed up now. so. <laughs> All right. At that point, this is the point of service that I say, if this is your first time at St. Mary's, if you are here every now and again, or if you are here week by week, my brothers and sisters, welcome. You are home. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Walk by faith. 
All things come of thee, O Lord. This morning we'll be celebrating Eucharistic Prayer B, as is in your bulletin or on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer, Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here.
Using the post-communion prayer in your bulletin or on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. May he rest in us so that we may be people of patience, people of hope, and people prepared for your everlasting life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen.
My brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.